Welcome back. It's the Pulse. And we're still discussing Anas's uh, video. And last night, there was premiering of the investigative piece titled Number 12. Some Ghanaians who watched it had a shock of their lifetime. Now, joining me in the studio uh, is uh, Jerome Autry, who is a former spokesperson of Asante Kotoko. We'll be delving into that conversation, but we put the question on Facebook, how you feel or what you feel about parliament handling or uh, opening investigations into corruption in Ghana football. Let's check out what you've been saying. A lot of reactions there. And Nano Fuswa says, what is there to investigate? Is it that we do not understand what we say or we are just confused as a nation? Is it an issue of semantics or we just don't know exactly what to say? What are they going to investigate again? Ah, in Tigana Pani, Anna, okay, and she puts a question there. And Akpalu Akpa says, How, where? Were they, where were they when uh, Jamesi Commission issued a white paper on their finding? We want the military to take over the investigations. And Tijani Ahmed Jallu says, this is absolutely, okay, that's a bit too harsh uh, for a word to use. Uh, he says, what kind of investigation again do they need aside this? Anyway, I'm not surprised because they themselves are all corrupt, so they are trying to cover up things. But believe me, we are not going to allow this if these football people are not imprisoned. And Godson Kwame says, is it that somebody is not thinking for us as a leader or leaders? Parliament investigate GFA. Why is it that we don't have any trust with the investigators and the public um, investigative institutions anymore? GFA issues are straightforward. There is evidence in the form of video. Interrogations is pitched against the video. That is all. So what do Parliament, what does Parliament want in this? So, so let's keep the conversation on Facebook. Send in your comments and let's see how you feel about this whole thing. Let's get on to our conversation with Jerome Autry. He is the former spokesperson of Asante Kotoko. And so, good to have you. Thank you. Now, um, let me gauge your mood. I know you watched it yesterday. How did it come across to you that, I mean, there's so much rot in Ghana's football, especially with its president taking that huge Let's, amount as bribe? Uh, let me just do a small correction. I, I'm a former editor of Kotoko Express. Okay, former the, editor the, yeah, of Kotoko. official newspaper of Kotoko. Express, not, okay. Not, not a spokesperson. But right. uh, to, your, to your question, I was very shocked and surprised and also sad uh, watching the video yesterday afternoon. I felt so bad at some point that I wished the, the video was ending. I mean, I, I just felt that if, if, it does, if it wasn't going to end at some point, maybe some of us will collapse. Because I was shivering, uh, wow. looking at some of the things that happen or have gone on behind the scenes. And perhaps because in some instances, some of us were very close to the, to the stories or to the incidents. And then we also spoke about it so passionately, feeling that there was something particularly wrong with, with some of the matches that were compromised. But you see, we didn't have evidence. I mean, we couldn't tell exactly what went wrong, yet we could feel that something might have gone wrong, therefore influencing certain referee, refereeing behavior. For example, the referee Samuel Suka, officiating a match between Hatsopok and Asante Kotoko in March last year. And then, after 80 minutes, I mean, we could tell that that game was going to end probably in a goalless draw. Then, with some eight minutes to end the game, he gave a penalty to Hatsopok. And television replays, that was after the game, clearly showed that the ball hit the back of a Kotoko defender, Ahmed Adams. But the referee gave a penalty. Mm. In fact, I felt that Suka at that moment was a very poor referee. Mm. And I remember putting on Facebook that if I were him, I would have given my FIFA referee badge to Docs. Because that decision, I, I mean, we know referees make 
mistakes. But some of the mistakes are too... It's just unpardonable. Are just so bad that you cannot make any sense out of it. And now you can relate to oh, this course. video you watched yesterday. I mean, yesterday. can't you see what, I mean, Thanasis' work? It, it, we could then tell, oh, so this is why he did this. He okay. took a goat. I mean, he, he, he took money to determine where that match should go. And I think that yesterday, watching such things, uh, clearly told me that it is not worth following our football mm. because if you have for instance this season we have 120 referees officiating in the premier league and if you have close to 60 or more of these referees being compromised what it tells me is that i mean he's it's a complete waste following our game and right. i think that the fa needs to sit up Everybody concerned with football in this country must be worried because we do not have a clean system running football in this country. I think the conversation has just begun and of course, it's, uh, let's, I want us to listen to some people who had the opportunity to watch the video last night uh, at the Accra International Conference Center. Sing, okay. shocking. Okay. I mean, this sport is the passion of the nation. And then what happened at the tail end, I just don't, I just don't get it. Okay. And then what punishment would you suggest they give to them? I'm not going to suggest any punishment. Okay. The authorities should watch it okay. and then do what they ought to do. They should do the need for it. It's an interesting watch. Uh, I would say that it didn't live up to its billing. Okay. But generally I think that it exposed a lot in Ghanaian sports. And uh, there's a lot to do to redeem the image of Ghana sports. And so we look forward uh, to seeing some real action by the players in the industry and by the government as well. We want to see how this matter is dealt with, the test case for us as a nation. And uh, we hope that it doesn't go the way that it normally goes, where there's public euphoria. And then after the euphoria, nothing happens. We want to see some real action, people taking to tax for this kind of behavior. Seemingly responsible person will make such uh, statements uh, to the public. And the president was emphatic in saying that he knows next to nothing about what uh, Chris Gentesi is purported to have said. So I think that's the rest the story as far as the presidency is concerned. But Chris Gentesi, if actually that is what happened, he acted very recklessly and very irresponsibly. I think that if we we'll go further, and I'm also urging a lot of companies to come with undercover investigation, and it will help, so nobody will be saved in this country. So if you think you are investigating somebody, there should be also somebody who can also investigate the investigator. But that doing, I think Ghana will, will, will go far. Because corruption is killing us in this country. Corruption is killing us in this country. And most of these things happen from 2016, uh, 2015, 2014. So I think, I think political parties should not take credit that, oh, this power corrupt. It happened from 2014 when everybody was not in power to 2017. Okay, so this also will boost the investment uh, community, the Amura, to come to Ghana that there is something going on. So reaction from the streets or from the Accra International Conference Center after they watched that shocking video. And on the streets of Accra, the reactions was that of shock and disbelief at how persons entrusted with management of Ghana football were compromising the game in order to profit uh, themselves. In the video, I felt so sad as a Ghanaian, and I'll be surprised if Yanteshi should leave in his own home till the next day. And I'll be very disappointed, and I'm calling on the Chief Justice, the IGP, and the CID boss. Now, the President too must step aside in his vice. The ministers in question must be called to order. They have to call them immediately, call for the arrest. Kenya Pong, who has been bugging, making noise 24 7, irritating us. Only for us to discover that his, part, his name is part in the video. Because Kwesi Nyantechi categorically stated that Kennedy has become more or less a problematic and obstacle in the party, making a whole lot of noise. And you see, because he's a financier, the president finds it difficult to do anything about him. But the president decided to shout him down. The president decided to create a ministry, a ministry which was in existence for Kennedy. So now the question here is, if that had happened, can you imagine the corruption aspect or the corruption that would have rolled in that ministry? Now, Kwesi Nyantechi had the gas to slap you and I and my brother covering me and you 
and the whole country, slapping us on our face by selling the country to an investor, not even a group of investors, but a single investor, telling the investor that all he needs is to produce 11 million. He gives the president five, the vice three, the minister in charge of that business or the transaction, the sector, takes two. Then the remaining one, he takes it with the deputy minister. I have watched the video, but I'm sad. I am sad for this country because I feel Nyan Techi and his political cronies have decided to sell Ghana. Because politically, he tells us that in two years, you become a politician. And that time, the vice president will become the president of the republic. He and the president, a uh, vice president, are planning to establish a fertilizer factory. And when they do that one, he will control the republic. And that when the investors bring the money, he will use the money and pay his way. He will pay his way, pay everybody. And then they will be able to control the state. Now, if I need... Those are some reactions from the streets. Now, there are calls for a total overhaul of the football system in Ghana. We hear the views of former sports ministers Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo and Neil Ante Van Der Poy on this matter. And then our big conversation with chairman of the Ghana League Clubs Association, Kujo Fiano. Right now, uh, I have... Uh, Jeremy Autry in the studio and I also have former sports minister Mama Yarga on the phone. They're all joining this conversation. Good afternoon to you, Honorable uh, Mama Yarga. You're welcome on the polls. Good afternoon. And good afternoon to you, uh, Kuzo Fiano. You're joining us via Skype. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Hi to Honorable Ayarga. All right, so it's set for a beautiful conversation. Let me start with you, uh, Honorable, and, and I would like to find out from you what's your impression uh, about the GFE after watching the video? Um, I have not watched the video yet. Yesterday it was uh, so correct, and uh, uh, I decided that I will wait for other opportunities to watch the video, but I have heard extensively the discussion of the content of the video. So I would say that I'm reasonably aware of uh, the content of the, the video. So if, if all that is discussed is, is anything to, to go by, then of course there are very um, interesting issues that arise. There are the issues that do not directly border on sports administration, such as the uh, engagement between uh, Mr. Chi and then the uh, so-called investor and the discussion about business and, and uh, procuring contacts, and et cetera. Those are strictly not uh, matters relating to sports administration or football administration. Uh, the areas that relate to football administration, of course, has to do with the effort to establish an agency that appears to short circuit or sidestep uh, the GFA itself and engage private agents so that uh, uh, some of the money could go to the private agents and uh, the fact that. Uh, from the reports that I have heard uh, being discussed on radio, uh, he and the team himself or whatever has an interest in that uh, agency uh, that seems to be a mechanism for finding money to a private person and depriving GFA, uh, the black stars, of, of the fund. So those are matters that, in my opinion, relate to sports and so we need to separate the two and treat them separately. And then the bigger issues that have to do with all the other referees and sports administrators who were caught on tape one after the other in different settings, engage in acts of malfeasance uh, of different natures, uh, depending on what it is that they were doing. So. All that, in my opinion, I mean, it's, it's very serious issues about uh, football administration and perhaps also uh, sports administration because uh, we've seen that for football, but we don't know what is happening in the other, you know, sporting disciplines. 
because of Ghana's uh, interest in football and uh, our extensive patronage of football, uh, this is uh, clearly the one that immediately catches public attention. But I think that it is very troubling, it is uh, worrying, uh, it is bad. Uh, it calls for a wider discussion of the matter. And today, Parliament took a decision that we should set up a committee to inquire into all these issues so that we can have a, a bigger picture of the situation. And then we can um, uh, see if there are measures we need legislation to deal with and to enact legislation to do, deal with those ones. And then if there are administrative matters that we need to make recommendations. As a former minister for youth and sport, I recall my days at the ministry and my own interactions with the GFA. Uh, basically, not being a football person, I did not go to the ministry with uh, an in-depth knowledge of the GFA as an organization. And my own you know, approach to the matter was to respect the, the line that should exist between the GFA and the ministry, which is that the GFA being an association of uh, uh, football organizations and, 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 and teams and et cetera and all that. I mean, I would respect that, that space that there is an association. But then because they also oversaw national teams and because the state was uh, supporting those national teams, to that extent, you know, I was interested in uh, their work. And so I worked with, with them and I related to them and uh, I saw their activities uh, firsthand. Uh, and what we have seen uh, clearly uh, concerns us, and so I can understand the public uh, okay. interest. All right, Honorable, I'll, I'll, I'll find out from you um, what, whether you were convinced with their dealings and whether this video confirms or denies uh, what you felt about the FA. But let me bring in Kujo Fiano into this conversation. I'd like to put the same um, question to you, uh, Mr. Fiano. How do you feel after watching this video? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I had the privilege of watching the video, uh, the first edition at 3 o'clock at the International Conference Center. And as I sat through the close to two hours video, I was, I was asking myself as to whether these things were happening from outside Ghana. But there were faces that I knew very well. And uh, uh, when it dawned on me that this thing was happening in Ghana, I felt ashamed of myself. And I, in short, I could only say that the industry had been bastardized by what I saw yesterday, ranging from match officials, the referees, match commissioners, the referees committee, the body that appoints referees each week in, out, appointing referees, match commissioners, uh, club administrators, and the, it, it was a complete uh, coverage of scope of the industry of football and the way I saw it being bastardized, I felt so sad as I sat through. Well, we're looking at uh, restructuring the Ghana Football Association. At least those are some calls coming from uh, people who know much about football. Um, what's your view on this? My view is that we need to hasten slowly. It is a very sad spectacle if you really watch the video. And I think that this should be the turning point in the development of the game of football. Uh, as the chairman of the Ghana League Club Association, uh, a major stakeholder in the game, we will want to call for cool heads for now because as I speak to you, we are receiving requests from individual clubs asking the executive committee members to resign. We we'll want to take a, a collective decision. By Monday, 4 o'clock, we'll be calling all the major stakeholders to a meeting where we'll use the, the statutes and regulations of the Federation to make sure that we get things done and done right. Those who have to leave, we have to see them off and ensure that we make sure that uh, uh, Ghana football is restructured in a way to regain the confidence 
of those who enjoy our end product, that's the spectators, that are Ghanaians, so that we could rebuild their confidence in our national teams to be able to watch their games and make sure that they have some, we have some credibility uh, left in the game. Because I cannot keep my last 10 CDs, uh, go to the stadium on Sunday, hoping that my favorite team will win, only for one individual or a group of people to turn the fortunes of the, the, the team. And these are some of the things FIFA frowns on seriously. So I would want us to make sure that we take timely decisions and, and uh, make steps so that FIFA will not clamp on us. Because some of these things are in direct opposite of FIFA's uh, catchphrase, fair play. If people will be aided to win matches, uh, that is not fair. So we think that as quickly as possible, as a connoisseur of the game, we should meet by Monday, take decisions. Those who ask to step aside, we need to do that through Congress. And those who will be found culpable will be made to face the law. Well, the GFA itself has issued a statement uh, about this whole scandal. One of the things it's saying is that, they, I mean, to be fair, a video, of, uh, a video must be made available for the GFA to watch. And uh, whatever they will do with it, we don't know yet. But I I'm sure, Jeremy, you're also wondering about the image of uh, Ghana football, especially on the international front. How do we salvage our image? I think I share the position of the Gata chairman, I mean, because, you see, if, if we rush, we may make mistakes. The, the objective is to correct or clean a rotten system. But if we don't take our time, we might make mistakes, which eventually may also cost us. I share the position of Mr. Fianu that we should be slow to getting things done. I am, however, happy with the fact that Gaka is receiving uh, calls and, 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 and letters from clubs, I mean individual clubs, saying that executive committee members captured in the video should resign. I mean, if on their own, on their own volition, they will not step out, I think that pressure should be brought to bear on them for them to step up. Because, you see, you have 22 people on a committee and three, four of them, I mean, are, are the type that you can compromise as low as 300 cities, it's not even up to $100. And if these are the kind of people running football in Ghana, certainly they have no business being there. Hmm. It's interesting. Um, Honorable, I'm, I'm sure I still have you on the line, uh, Mama Erga. You, you are former Minister of Sports, and of course, from the uh, analysis you gave earlier, it shows that you yourself had some doubts about the FA. Watching this video, oh, okay, you said you've not watched. I'm sure you're yet to watch, but all the things you've heard uh, from this video and the revelations, the damning revelations, does it confirm or deny uh, how you felt about the FA then when you were Minister? Well, I mean... Um Clearly, this, this uh, if you recall, this is not the first time really that there's been some indication that there's quite a crisis within the, 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 the football subsector. Uh, you know, when they went to Brazil and then they came back, we set up a committee of inquiry, if you remember, and uh, the hearings of the committee revealed quite a lot and so we had quite some opportunity to sense that there was a problem within the administration of football generally because that committee didn't just restrict itself to uh, activities and the incidents in Brazil it went beyond that so this one in a sense uh, confirms but in a more shocking way um, the indications that we got from the committee that looked at the Brazil situation. And I also, you know, uh, doubled in football uh, quite innocently. And within one season, my, my, my team went into relegation. <laughs> and I, I, I'm beginning to understand why we were losing all our matches because uh, I didn't realize I had to be paid all those money. So bringing in to, the matches, the, the, yes. there are suggestions that uh, the Ghana League uh, should be suspended immediately. W what's your take on this? Well, I mean, it is an association, and I've always said that let's 
never forget the fact that this is an association. People have come together to form an association. And so I think members of the association should immediately meet and review the situation and take urgent measures to begin to rebuild confidence in the association and the management of football. And if they meet and the cancellation or whatever is one of the recommendations that they come up with as something that they need to do, I will support them. But there's no doubt that the association must meet urgently uh, to the situation and begin to work to build confidence among Ghanaians and Ghanaians, but the international community, because this clearly does a terrible blow to the image of uh, football in Ghana. And given Ghana's reputation in the international community as a soccer nation, uh, something like this really will go far in terms of you know coverage. And people will see, people will hear, BBC is, is part of it, and so the whole world will, will hear almost immediately, and uh, our reputation will suffer. And so there's a lot of work that needs to be done by everybody to rebuild the image of, of this country and of football. And the association should be the one with the primary interest to initiate the process, and all of us will support the, the process. Definitely, um, there is an image to redeem here, and all of us are part of uh, the uh, it's a collective responsibility. So I'm going to be uh, coming to you, Kujo Fiano, to find out what kind of exactly what reforms we need, um, you know, short, medium, and long term measures we need to redeem our, our, our image immediately and ensure that the rot is cleansed, um, the GFA is cleansed of this rot. And then I'll be looking uh, out for for uh, how the, our funds, uh, the fund base over there are feeling about this whole thing. Are they losing hope? Are they abandoning football after this expose? But let me get to the uh, premises of the Ghana Football Association where uh, my colleague Komla Adum is stationed uh, to bring us updates on what's happening there. Uh, good afternoon to you, Komla. Uh, paint a picture of what is happening at the GFA right now. All right, so I'm told we lost Kobla on the phone. He will join us very shortly. So let me come to you, Kujo Fiano, and ask you exactly what reforms do you think we need for uh, the Ghana Football Association? Yeah, what we need to do, and I, I want to say that I cannot agree more with uh, Honorable Ayaga, but to say that uh, we've practiced this particular law from 2005 to the 13 years with one person at the helm of affairs. Definitely, uh, we've seen the end results. There is this saying that power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts, absolutely. And we think that we've vested too much power into the hands of the presidency of the association. So we need to look at our, our statutes and regulations to ensure that there will be those checks and balances in, in our system. Because the laws and the rules are clear. For instance, FIFA will tell you that even after performing a duty, however good that you, you've performed, you are not supposed to receive any gift at the end of it. And here you are, officials, administrators, wh wh whatever, collecting monies with careless abandon. And I think that we should, as quickly as possible, as I've said, we have given ourselves up to Monday to meet with the major stakeholders in the industry to ensure that we quickly put together a Congress, the highest decision-making body of the association, where we need to put a body in place as quickly as possible. Because as we rightly said, now the emergency committee that is supposed to take the day-to-day -day decisions of the FA cannot form a quorum as to what we have now. They have no vice president. So in the absence of the president, there will be nobody to act. Two members of the, that emergency committee, uh, that's the president and uh, Mr. Edidoku were captured on the video. So if they were going to step aside, we'll be having only two members left, uh, Mr. Kweku Eia and Mr. Nanabenyi Eisen. With even Nanabenyi Eisen, he just came out of a suspension by FIFA. So by extension, he would not have 
uh, that leverage to work. So we are having, let's say, a maximum of two. They cannot form a quorum. So the emergency committee can also not operate. And out of the 22 uh, executive committee members, we having about five of them being indicted. It means that if Mr. Doku will set aside, it means that we are going to disenfranchise the entire Greater Accra region from football administration. The same will apply to Northern region. The same will apply to Eastern region. The same will apply to women, football, and other constituent bodies. So it means that we need to collapse the entire system as it is now and make sure that we start a gradual rebuilding, not losing the, fight, the fact that we must be doing this at the time we engage in other competitions. If it is the wish of the, the, the entire or the majority of the members that we should even put our competition on hold because it is a fact, as stated in the video, that some of our games were uh, compromised. Even I want to go back to Italy, where Juventus, who had then won the league, were caught to have compromised on one or two games. They were demoted straight into Division Two, And they started from there, came back. Now they are champions for over a period now. Here you are. Clubs are punished. We have lived with uh, a system where the Middle League produced results like 31 against 30, 23 against 22. And we think that this uh, expose by Anas is giving us the opportunity to clean our house and make sure that we start on a clean slate. So there are people who are saying that Kwesi Nyantichi must step down as a first step to, towards cleaning uh, our house, GFA. It's, it's long overdue. It's long overdue. You should have done that uh, immediately the video was shown. Uh, yesterday. I wouldn't want to move into the political arena where he engaged in other businesses. But if I want to limit myself to what he did to football, being an executive member of FIFA and the first vice president mm -hmm. of CAF, where you know that some of the things that he did vis-a-vis -vis the contract that he entered into, drafting the MOU himself, even on a, a CAF uh, memo pad, got it typed and signed as the agent. That's quite interesting. Put uh, a company there uh, as the agent who are going to take. Why should GFA alone who sign contracts and it is always 20 and 25 percent? We've never come below 20 or 10 before. Why should it be so? And we have been complaining about this thing time and over again to the, to the extent that uh, clubs were being classified as third parties where clubs could not be classified as third parties because it is our product that are used in getting the sponsorship. Because you say the Premier League being played by Ash Gold, House of Folk, Kotoko. That warranted the sponsorship. So if clubs will ask for copies of the contracts and they be told that they are third parties, are we, the video had now shown all of us the reasons why we are not being shown these contracts. So I think that uh, we could say in in another breath that the video came timely. It's a good omen for us to give us opportunity to clean our system and make sure that we put these things behind us. All right, I'll, I'll get uh, to Jeremy and you have to hold on a second for me to get to know what the fans are saying. But let's go back to Komla Adum, who is on the premises of the Ghana Football Association. Komla, um, paint a picture of what exactly is happening at the GFA. Well, Aisha, um, at the moment, it's been a controlled day here at the premises of the Ghana Football Association. When I say control, I mean it's been heavily regulated. Movement in and out of the FA offices or premises has been highly regulated. Uh, I counted as many as five police officers in the premises, two of them at the entrance of the premises, together with the ordinary or the normal um, security detail of the association who are usually stationed in front of the premises and they would not allow any individual into the premises if those individuals do not have any business in the facility. So uh, when we tried, you know, getting in there to attempt to speak to officials of the FA that they would not allow us in, uh, they told us that even the officials we are looking for are not in the office at the moment. So it's a highly uh, controlled, you know, atmosphere here at the Football Association premises, Aisha. We know of a statement that has been issued uh, from the Ghana Football Association demanding a copy of the video uh, that Anas Arimeyao, Anas and his team put together. Um, 
do you have a sense that they've been presented with that video? Well, um, well, I've been, I've been speaking to some sources within the association uh, premises, and it, it appears that the statement that uh, we got earlier today from the association doesn't represent the views of the entire body of the association. Uh, some of the sources they have been telling us that uh, Mr. Isaac Ado, who even signed that statement, uh, is not well placed to essentially sign or issue that statement in the first place. So uh, it's a bit of a mixed, you know, kind of reaction here at the association premises. Some of the individuals do not think uh, the statement issued by Isaac Ado uh, is the right thing to do at this moment, Isa. All right. Many thanks to you. Komla Adum is our, uh, my colleague, and he will be bringing us more in our subsequent bulletin from the Ghana Football Association. Jerome, before I went to Komla, I wanted to find out from you what the uh, uh, football fans are saying about this whole expose. The, the reaction has been one of disappointment in one breath. And in another breath, there are those who also see the video as a confirmation of all the suspicions they've had. But if you put everything together, people have been angry. I mean, personally, I have been angry because you travel up and down, covering football matches, writing, talking about it, and then you get a feeling that you want to do something to help the development of the game. But then the, the, the key actors behind the scenes are also working to bring it down. So reaction from people on the streets, even as you've played, uh, clearly points to disappointment. And that is why I'm surprised that that disappointment, that the, the weight of that disappointment is yet to fall on the Football Association for them to feel that indeed people are not happy with what we have, we've seen in the video and then some action must be taken. I have said that if I was part of the executive committee members that were captured in the video, I would have resigned last night. Do you agree uh, with those who are calling for a complete overhaul of the GFA? Yes, of course, because if you look at the rot. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to go into the aspect where the FA president talks about the president of the country. But I've been looking at leadership. If this is the kind of leadership we have, it goes to show that we cannot have a credible system. And I'll tell you this. If the FA president can form a company and take part of a sponsorship money that is coming to, to, to clubs. I mean, that is, that is wrong. And I, I will not have the moral courage to come back and, and, and behave as if I, I really want the interest of the game if I, was, I were to be in his shoes. I, I believe that something needs to be done to clean the system. How it will be done, maybe we would have to go through due process. But at the end of the day, we should be interested in cleaning the system so that those outside who feel encouraged to come into the game. What, I mean, we have seen, which is going to be shown to the world anyway, definitely will have serious consequences on our game. And I do not see how we would come back if we are not committed to cleaning the, the system from this point. All right. Um, Honorable, if you are on the line, if I still have you there, um, do you think that the, G, the GFA should be, should be resolved? Uh, dissolved, I beg your pardon. All right, I'm told I lost Honorable uh, Mahama Yarga there. So I'll go back to you, Kujo Fiano, and you were earlier making the point that uh, you cannot form a quorum now. So what does, what does that mean? Does it mean that, um, I mean, explain that to me. happen to be a member of the five was dismissed. So they are left with four. Out of the four, we all saw the president himself on TV indulging in things that we felt would force him out of us if, if we will not leave voluntarily. The second person, uh, Mr. Edidoku, who is currently in Iceland with the senior national team, was also captured. So if it happens that the two of them resign, in addition to the dismissed vice president, it means we have only two. And I said earlier that even with the two, we have an issue with one of them who just came out of suspension by FIFA. And we are saying that if we were running 
a truly accountable organization. That gentleman who was indicted by FIFA, he went on appeal and lost the appeal to have been shown the door. He is there now with Lawyer Kukwe here. And the two of them cannot take any decision that will be binding on our members. Having now, said that, would you agree with those who say the league should be suspended? I am saying that that decision will be taken when we meet at Congress because the Congress is the high decision making body. Mm -hmm. If that is the feeling of our members that the league has been bastardized, where results were compromised, why not? I believe that there was a time league were played and abridged for various reasons. If we meet and the decision is that the league has been bastardized and that it should be uh, suspended and a new one started, all decisions will have to be taken by Congress, the highest decision taking body of GS or the GSA. All right. Many thanks to you, Kujo Fiano. Uh, we're extremely grateful for your time this afternoon. Kujo Fiano is chairman of Galka. Jerome, you heard Kujo Fiano who's saying that if that is the feeling of the people at that emergency meeting, then so be it. What do you think? Should the league be suspended? I share, I share his opinion. I mean, you, you know, as much as we want to clean the system, we cannot also just go in there and shut it off. I mean, people, people have put their money in. Some considerations will have to be made. And then, because we also want to be law-abiding, if Congress is the highest decision-making body of the FA, you would have to go to Congress and make those determinations. But I, I strongly feel that with the population of referees being compromised, even if we are coming back in July, as they have announced, it will be very difficult to get clean referees in the system. So a decision will have to be taken on that. We are seeing people implicated in the video coming out to try and justify what we saw in the video. For you, do you think there's any hope? There's, is there anything left for the people saw, who we saw in the video to salvage their image? Perhaps they will have to go to court for the court to determine. And I mean, I... I am not a lawyer, I do not know law, but on the basis of what I saw, I think that there are, they don't have any moral justification to, 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 to offer us. Because there were two people in the video who rejected the bribes. I mean, those, those people could have taken it. They didn't take it because, as we heard in the video, that is not their lifestyle. That is not how they do their things. Right. Others took it and were even boasting. I mean, one, one referee, Safwa Dadi, was talking about the fact that he's been in this business for a long time. That's what he does. Mm. And in one of the videos to be shown later by BBC, I, 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 I heard one of the referees, or I've heard one of the referees talk about the fact that it is done everywhere. It's They've not been become doing it. a norm. So, yes, people may have maybe some legal avenues to exploit. I, I cannot tell that for sure. But on morality, if we are talking about whether or not what they did was right or wrong, I do not think that it was right because Mr. Fianu made that point clear, that FIFA even makes it clear that you cannot take gifts. And if you can't take gifts, bribery is out of the question. Yeah. So, well, if, if there are legal opportunities for them to look at and see how they can salvage their image, it's up to them to take it. Mm. But in the court of public opinion, they have been convicted. They have been convicted. Thank you very much. Jerome Ochri is the former editor of Kotoko Express, official newspaper for Kotoko. Thank you so much for, you for your time on the post. And I'd like to say uh, thank you to Honorable Mama Yerga for joining in the conversation. We'll take a brief